people welcome back to our youtube channel so if you are an international student and you intend to apply for a study visa to canada come next year or maybe as you are watching this video please remember that recently ircc or let me say the canada government said that they were going to reduce the number of visas for students so as i'm talking to you if you are not aware there is a drop compared to last year so this year that is basically looking at 35,000 visas okay 35,000 international students to come into canada compared to last year and the other previous years but one thing you also need to understand is that those who are applying from asia they usually get higher acceptance rate and some other few countries in africa like botswana and lesotho these are the people that get the good number of the visas, especially those Asian counterparts like people from Japan, Philippines, and the rest. So if you are in Africa, please try to maximize your application to an extent that you can easily secure your own visa. Now, I am going to be giving you some points to put into consideration during your visa application or for you to put into consideration, do more research on before you apply. But before we do that, my name is Milton Fonkwa. Thank you so much for joining our platform. Remember, everything I put on here, all these videos are due to my research experience and also my study abroad experience. So please, if you find anything important here, just help us share the video. And if you think that you cannot share, at least give us a like. And of course, tell somebody to watch videos from this channel. I hope that will help. Remember, I am only doing this because I want you to actually do the right thing. Okay, I want you to succeed. If you succeed, you are giving me more joy, right? So that is why I keep showing up here on a daily. And the hardest thing you can do for me is to support me in any way you can. Thank you so much. Now, these are the ways you can increase your chances of getting your Canada study visa approved in 2024. 2025 first thing first i would like to draw your attention to the fact that canada is looking for people that they need right now why am i talking about this i am talking about this because i want you to consider the choice like the course you want to go in for the course choice is very important don't just apply for any type of course okay because at the end of the day you have to explain yourself to the visa officer to stand a chance to get the visa applying for any type of choice or course because that is only what is available at that moment is not doing yourself good before you apply for a course ask yourself will i be able to defend myself when it comes to the visa application because there is a lot involved if you've been watching videos on this channel so the first point you should take note of is the course choice what am i applying for can i defend myself on this course that is the next thing then another thing i want you to draw your uh to to put into consideration is the reputation of the school now why am i saying this i'm saying this particular point because few days back i received somebody she actually came to me and book an appointment and we were to work on something she later came back and told me that oh she got somebody and the person got her admissions then she sent me the offer letter i was like checking what school is this i've never heard of it it's not humber college it's not centennial it's not conestoga it's not doham it's not uh Quatland. it's not none of those big universities that are colleges that are recognized out there it's a college hiding somewhere in uh, Alberta. I don't even know. And when I check, they do not offer PGWP. So I told her to make sure she verifies very well. You know the way when you try to advise some people, they might not listen. My only concern here is consider the reputation of the school. Don't just go to a school because the courses there are cheap. Uh, the courses there, it's easy to go in. No, ask yourself, if I graduate from this school, what is going to happen after graduation that is what you need to ask yourself and again like i said don't just go to any school go to a good school not a popular school it is very important for you to put this into consideration gaps and limitation gaps in your studies limitation in your career prospect now what are you trying to study 
For example, let's assume that maybe you studied uh, maybe what we call uh, economics before, right? And now you want to go for something related to nursing. Let's assume that maybe a nurse now, and whereas you studied economics before in school. But rather, you instead of you to apply for a nursing program, early childhood education, maybe personal support worker, maybe uh, something related to personal assistance, you are instead going back to apply for a course that relates to economics. And mind you, you studied economics six years or ten years ago. What you are doing now is related to nursing field. Why are you going back to economics? These are gaps. There are gaps already. It's been 10 years you did something in economics, right? Right now, you are doing something related to nursing. So it will make more sense if you are applying for a course or a program that relates to the nursing field. Now, this way, it is going to help you because you would be able to explain yourself to the visa officer that, oh, I graduated 10 years ago in economics, but right now I am, I am now into the nursing department. And the reason why I am going to apply, why I choose this program is because, the, remember, it is a program that relates to nursing. The reason why I choose the program is because of this, this, I noticed this in my hospital, which was not the best for me. And I want to do this because I believe after the course, it is going to help me to actually fix this in the hospital and contribute to sustainable development goals. This is how you explain yourself and, of course, stand a chance for your visa to be granted. Then also understand that there are some courses that are in demand in Canada. Like I said, I always say it all the time. If you have the opportunity to study nursing, healthcare in particular, if you have an opportunity to go in for trade, if you go have an opportunity, trade here, I mean carpentry, uh, bricklaying, people who are into weathering and stuff like that so if you have a po an opportunity go and take such courses if not go into agriculture these are the people canada is looking for now especially if you check in demand fields in canada and look at the ircc website world and equally check express entry portal you will see all these things I'm talking about. So you should try to consider them before you apply to any school in Canada. Another thing is you need to consider your post-graduation plans, all right? Like when you graduate in Canada, what are you going to do? Remember, the visa officer is interested to know what you are going to do immediately after you finish your study program. Of course, most of us, we are going to Canada because we want to get better life. You do not intend to return. The visa officer knows that you might not return. But again, you have to convince them and let them understand that you plan to come back to your home country establish yourself here open a business here maybe change something here or change something there but they know that definitely you will not come back but you have to defend yourself so post-graduation work plan or maybe post-graduation plans is you have to tell them why you are studying the program and what you are going to do after you finish the program it is this clear then you also talk about home ties home ties here we refer to things that will bring you back to your home country now some of the things that will bring you back are your family your family member your wife your children and of course your parents maybe your property maybe your landed property your car or maybe your cars maybe a business you establish back home you are involved in some voluntary activities or maybe voluntary engagements uh maybe some religion projects so these are some of the things that are like ties back to your home country so you need to put them also some of these things are going to feature in the letter of explanation you need to mention them and remember as you are explaining yourself you need to also be explaining yourself and telling the visa officer why you have to come back to your home country this must be like an anthem you sing on every paragraph at least relate the statement or relate everything you are doing to coming back to your home country it is so essential when you make them understand that you are thinking of returning back home they might just be looking at your visa and before you know you will get it so please put all this into consideration now let's talk about the biggest boss here which is the financial requirement for you to study in canada you need to show that you have money you need to show that you have enough money what i mean here is for you to study in canada you need to show that you have one year of your tuition fee plus uh, one year for your living cost money plus miscellaneous one year of your tuition fee you can only know from the school website then plus 
one year of living cost money, which is 20635 according to IRCC, then plus miscellaneous. There is no amount that was stated for miscellaneous. Uh, but I usually encourage people to have like $3,000, $4,000 to $5,000 added to it. Then that is your proof of funds. So you need to make proof of funds good. And remember, a new account is not good to do proof of funds. Uh, a business account is not good to do proof of funds. Also, if you are the one sponsoring yourself, bring out all your documents, your salary slip, your, your, your employment contracts. And if you, have, if you are working and equally maybe you are earning from the job, a good job, bring in the documents and the salary slip. And also uh, maybe getting sponsored by somebody. Remember, it has to be your father, your mother, your brother, or siblings. It cannot be a friend. Then you also need to get documents from these people. Proof of relationship, affidavit of support, right? Then you get their identification documents. This is to prove that these people are actually going to sponsor you and you actually know them. It is so essential for you to put this into consideration. Then remember that maybe if you are thinking of studying abroad, like I said, business accounts are not good to use when it comes to Canada's study visa. Because now, think, come to think about it, what happens if you have, let's assume that you are using your dad, who is a businessman, and out of a sudden your dad travels to Dubai and use all the money in his account, and like today and tomorrow you need money, how are you going to get the money? So it's better to even tell your sponsor to give you the money, to deposit the money in your account, then just give you evidence to show to the visa officer. I think this way it is better but rather than using a business account that belongs to your parents is a no-no for me i hope this will help you these are some of the things that if you do them and check very well you are increasing your chances of getting the canada study visa and remember without the provincial attestation you cannot apply so i'm just here to explain this to you i hope this will help you till we meet again in another one bye bye for now